Good day. Uh, I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. If you have any questions, you may call the Preventive Medicine Center at 860-549-3444. Um, I had a friend who said something that was very revealing to me, and uh, he's sort of constantly advised me, encouraged me, educated me, uh, even you could call it treated me. And he says that uh, I am too much in your face. So the phrase is in your face. Now my question is, is that what you see on uh, TV here? Uh, what do you think? Am I too much in your face? And I, I, frankly, it sort of rang true. I know Th that there is a simplicity, that would be the word I would use. Um, uh, commoner would be another word I would use to the way I speak. But on the other hand, there's always a little bit of criticism. It seems to me there is too often a little bit of implied criticism in the way I say things. So um, uh, as I was pointing out to this friend uh, that... Um, I've been a teacher ever since I was in the sixth grade uh, back in Ohio. Whenever a teacher was absent in the sixth grade, I was called upon to teach the class. The same happened uh, sophomore or junior year in high school. I was called upon to teach the math class. By the way, I was not the smartest person in the math class. I was simply the best teacher. And frankly, I wasn't very good in the math class, but I was good in the other classes. Um, so uh, the, the point is that uh, I have this need to teach. And of course, there are others who do it, but they probably do it with less in your face. And you might say, well, why don't you just try to be more encouraging? The thing that I have found out is that being in your face is a little more effective. What turns out is that's a cost and benefit uh, decision. While it is more effective, it also creates more of a problem for me. So you get the benefits and I get the punishment, and uh, I guess that is the way of the world. Now, uh, I wanted to start off with a couple of things in particular. Um, and uh, as you know, we live in West Hartford and we live in Connecticut. And today I read an article that uh, was about an article in The Current, and it's talking about people who are leaving the state of Connecticut. And what it turns out, there is a huge loss of $2.7 billion, $2.7 billion of adjusted gross income that could have been taxed if these people had stayed here. Florida was the biggest winner. And I have any number of, of patients of mine who, now that I think about it, have simply moved to Florida to get away from the burdens of taxation here in Connecticut. Well, why do we have a burden of taxation here in Connecticut? And to be perfectly straightforward and in your face, it is because we have incompetent government that doesn't understand how much you can spend. They just spend whatever they, well, not whatever they feel like, but they don't take into consideration the limitations that should be placed upon them. Now, the last time on my last TV show, I um, uh, talked about uh, the mayor and the council for the city of West Hartford. West Hartford is an onerous ta tax burden area. And um, here is an article from December 7th, 2017. Imagine that, December 7th, uh, Pearl Harbor Day, uh, the beginning of World War II. And it, the title of this article is Moves to Stabilize Credit Rating, Pension Liabilities Under Council Review, and it talks about the West Hartford government and how they collect money and how they spend money. And all I can say is that, frankly, the, the numbers were confusing to me. I didn't really get a hold of it. But what I know is that Sherry Roth 
and the Council of West Hartford and the budget director need to get a grip on reality. Now, I understand they are faced with reality. There are issues that have been brought to them. But there, this is like a war, and they don't seem to understand. So what I am saying to you, count, contact your council person. Count, contact your state representative and state senator to say to them that they need to get fiscally responsible. And of course, you know, uh, in a certain sense, that will make things worse before they get better. But it is what is necessary across the nation. It's just that Connecticut is in the top five worst states in the nation, along with Illinois and I think New York. Let's see, what were the top five for taxation and budget difficulties? So let me say it again. Contact Sherry Roth. Now, she and I had a brush up. Uh, on a different website, and uh, I thought her response was inappropriate in view of the fact that uh, she was in the position she was in. I believe she was uh, mayor of West Hartford at that point. Um, so uh, anyhow, uh, can I get, let's see, actual loss of $100 million in income tax revenue in one year, that doesn't account for all of the problems, in a $20 billion budget for the state of Connecticut. Um, and it says here, many of Connecticut's wealthy residents are moving out and they're taking their money with them. Uh, let's see. The most taxpayers, Connecticut, let's see, Florida was the major winner. Um, the average income was $253,000 of the people who moved to Florida. That means more than $2 billion in income moved from Connecticut to Florida. Uh, okay, I'm not quickly finding. So let me say again, uh, I have nothing against anybody personally. I don't think Sherry Roth is doing a great job of leading West Hartford. Everybody talks about how they're dealing with this, that, and the other. Uh, could, it, could you, but thank you. What a perceptive, what is your name? No, oh, I just got, uh, you won't give me his name. Uh, okay, enough of that. Now, today's news. Um, some of the big medical information, did I finish that conversation? Was I too much in your face? Uh, if I'm too much in your face, let me know and help me get out of being so much in your face. Did I speak truth uh, to the mother or not? Um, anyhow, chief financial officers of various healthcare industries are looking for ways to reduce costs. <laughs> I can't believe reduce costs. How about preventing disease? That would reduce costs a lot. It's known how to prevent disease. Uh, we need to be tougher on what we, there, the simple analysis is what we breathe, drink, eat, exercise, and allow ourselves to think. I am big on the last one in terms of defining it as unrealistic expectations. There would be far less anxiety and depression if everybody realized that very bad things can happen and what you do is you pick yourself up and deal with them as best possible. I'm not saying people who are anxious and depressed cry in their beer, but on the other hand, the sooner you get to dealing with the problem, the sooner you're going to get over your anxiety and depression. Uh, and um, uh, that's number five. Breathing is number one. We need to be tougher on smoking. It was really great when smoking was sort of outlawed, so to speak, in restaurants and bars and so on and so on. That was a big step forward. Uh, I disagree with the Republicans who object to taxing large uh, soft drinks. I think that taxing them because of their high sugar content and relationship to obesity is correct. But I also think that the same should be held for the uh, synthetically sweetened uh, soft drinks uh, because those upset the intestinal bacteria 
which then allows disease to develop for another reason. In other words, it may not contribute to overweight and obesity, but it contributes to other problems by, by disturbing the microbiome. So what we breathe, what we drink, what we eat, what about eating? The human body, whether you and I like it or not, is approximately, meaning 90 plus percent, vegan vegetarian. The egg for breakfast, the tuna sandwich for lunch, and the chicken uh, breast, uh, skinless chicken breast for dinner is absolutely wrong. That is not right. And don't waste time arguing with me about the benefits of the Mediterranean diet, even though that has elements that are really quite correct. Uh, unprocessed whole grains like brown rice or millet or quinoa or hulled, H-U-L-L-E-D, hulled barley or whole oats called oat groats, those are excellent and those are in the Mediterranean diet. Vegetables are in the Mediterranean diet. Beans are in the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, I've just said the three major components of the diet that is the most effective, and they're right in the Mediterranean diet. So uh, what do I feel about Max Burger? <laughs> tasty, tasty, but that's how we get diseases. And uh, what about when you go to the restaurant, virtually all the entrees are fish or chicken or meat or uh, 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 crab uh, burgers, uh, and so on and so on. And so, uh, so on and so on in terms of animal protein. Animal protein has no fiber. The human body runs on fiber, fiber-containing foods. Now, what about taking Metamucil? That's fiber. No, that's not the right idea. You want to do things naturally if you want to be disease-free. And I'm not a perfect example. I have my ups and downs. Um, I've often thought about my eating patterns and what's right and what's wrong with them. And I'm largely correct, but I'm significantly wrong. And this is not mea culpa and true confessions and misery loves company. Uh, it is a discussion. I'm here to educate you. It's not a case of don't do what I say or, or don't do what I do, do what I say, which is a dumb line in one of my favorite movies by George Clooney. Uh, George Clooney is in the movie. It's from dusk till dawn. And uh, Selma Hayek is like, a, she's a dancer in that and not a very good dancer. But Lord, does she have an incredible physique. Anyhow, it's not entirely revealed, but it's pretty good. Uh, so uh, breathe, drink, eat, exercise, and think. How much should we exercise? Uh, there are new programs that are incredibly efficient where you can get adequate exercise in seven minutes. Uh, you can get enough exercise in 15 to 20 minutes. Yes, you should do some aerobics and some weightlifting. And what about yoga? Absolutely a good idea. Tai Chi, same thing. Uh, those things are good for you, and they're good for balance, uh, preventing falls. They're good for uh, flexibility, which is very important, for uh, uh, joint problems. By the way, um, uh, I don't know if I filled you in on my personal problem. Last uh, March uh, 2017, I suddenly woke up one day with pain in my left hip. It took me a long time to see if it was going to get better and so on. And I went to a number of doctors and I got finally x-rays and uh, MRI. And I have some micro fractures and significant arthritis in my left hip from a ski injury dating to, get this, 1991. Bottom line is, in December, I flew to Atlanta to have Emory University, uh, Dr. Ken Mautner, inject my own stem cells into my left hip. Now, uh, today's date is January 8th, Monday, January 8th. Can you see that watch? Is that a big watch? What do you think? Well, it's big enough for me. The reason I like this watch is not all the fancy other dials going around, but it shows, uh, it's got a sweep second hand. It shows the day and the date and the month in readable size. I have a, a nice watch 
that has the day, the date, the month, and a sweep second hand, and all the numbers, just like this has all the, all the numbers on it, but I can't read the day, the date, and the month on it, halfway. So anyhow, uh, Ken Mautner, in mid-December, like December 16th, injected my own stem cells into my left hip, and I think I'm some better, but I certainly am not over the hump to the point where I am normal. I'm still using a cane. I still experience discomfort in every step. It is a case of we shall see. And uh, what is the plan? The plan is to wait at least three months and possibly six after the stem cells. And I'm taking some supplements that he recommended and so on. By the way, what's my rule about supplements? Five days a week because I believe the body gets used to anything you do every day. What if you only drank five days a week or what if you only smoke five days a week? Well, to be perfectly frank, that's better than drinking and smoking seven days a week. Now, what if you drank and smoked the same amount? Please, this argument and discussion can go on forever. You shouldn't, uh, alcohol should be limited to four uh, drinks a week or less, four standard drinks a week or less. And, uh, what about tobacco? Uh, well, I think in terms of uh, cigars, uh, I, I, tobacco is bad for you, but then so too is alcohol. Uh, they're both uh, unsafe at any speed. The old story of uh, uh, the Corvette, I'm not sure that was a true statement, but uh, it was the name of the book, Unsafe at Any Speed by Ralph Nader. And um, uh, so the, the less the better. I don't recommend drinking alcohol. I don't recommend smoking. Uh, but the body, will, what if you had one cigar a year? Do, you, do I think that would make any difference? And the answer is no, I don't, unless you did it while you had pneumonia. Uh, so I think that uh, there is a safe limit to almost everything. And you may say, well, what about heroin and cocaine? Look, we do use heroin. It's called Demerol. It's called Dilaudid. It's called Oxycodone. It's called Vicodin. It's called Tylenol with codeine. Uh, we use narcotics, hopefully correctly, which is infrequently. And um, what about Suboxone? And what about uh, getting people off narcotics? I was listening to a, a program today about safe injection sites, which are being set up in Philadelphia, at least they're going to try to do that. There uh, is a tug of war going on between what the feds want and what the cities and states want. And we have no safe injection sites in the United States. There are, according to the program, there are a hundred throughout the world. A hundred is not very many. So why aren't there more? Uh, I don't know. But um, uh, I wrote something recently about um, uh, changing subject, I'll come back to that. I think that, uh, uh, never mind. Let's see here. Oh, now I do want to change the subject. I want to change the subject to the Golden Globe Awards last night. And uh, there was someone who, I, a woman, who wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal about the role of women in provoking men into activities that men should not be doing. Now, I always agree. There are certain lines that should not be crossed. But on the other hand, there's always a spectrum. What happens if somebody brushes past and sort of rubs their hand on the tush of somebody who they don't know or they do know or whatever? Is that the equivalent of someone who is literally sexually assaulted. And of course, they're completely different. But on the other hand, uh, we need to be even-handed. Uh, I have a Facebook site, and in my discussions, I require that people be even-handed in their discussions. And when I comment on various blogs, I require that people be even-handed in their responses. I must say that um, uh, I find my fellow Democrats and uh, some Republicans, uh, 10 minutes, uh, fellow Democrats, some Republicans, less for the Republicans, being very uneven-handed. 
And that is disappointing to me as a long-standing liberal Democrat uh, going back to the Kennedys. Anyhow, let's see if I can find what I wrote. Uh, oh, no, this is about last night. A friend of mine wrote me this, and what was he, he said? Let me get this straight. That was the title of his email. Hollywood women who've been wearing see-through garments and dresses expose half of their intergluteal cleft, you know what that is, in the rear end, to the Oscars are now dressing in black because a few men took them up on it and played uh, grab derriere. Amazing. Now, there is some powerful thinking in that statement. Women have been unbelievably provocative, and of course, men should know enough to keep hands off, but this is the two sides to the same coin. Women should not be so provocative as to incite men to such extents. Men should know better, but the fact of the matter is, it is not a one-sided affair. Okay, enough of that one. Now, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, endometriosis. I read an article about endometriosis. Um, and the article was uh, di dis discuss lifestyle. If you don't want endometriosis, if you have endometriosis, 100% avoidance of dairy products will be a help unless your condition is very far advanced. So what I'm telling you, if you're starting to run into menstrual cramps, if you have irregular menstrual periods, if you have ovarian cysts, if you have uh, breast cysts, if you have breast cancer, 100% avoidance of dairy products. Oh, I read the most amazing study. I'm very critical of my fellow physicians. Am I too much in your face? I'm very critical of my fellow physicians for the way articles are written. There was an article just written about milk and whether or not it caused diabetes. So they had two groups. They had a group that had, we'll call it regular milk, and then they had a group that had hydrolyzed milk protein, which means they broke the protein down so it wasn't standard uh, milk protein, uh, casein. And what they found is there was no difference in the incidence of diabetes. What a dumb article. How stupid. Even though it would have been hard to find a control group of babies that were likely breastfed and then brought up vegan, I will bet you dimes to dollar that the incidence of juvenile type 1 diabetes, insulin-dependent diabetes, is way higher in the group that had any form of milk other than mother's milk. So. Uh, and again, I see it all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, okay, I'm still looking for the article that I wrote about drug addiction. You know me. Uh, this is a good quote. Never underestimate the faith in the therapeutic forces of Western appeasement to accept the unacceptable. Five minutes. That has been the United States, that has been the European Union, to accept the unacceptable. And again, I'm not a big fan of Trump's style, but at least he's begun to change that. By the way, can you separate substance from style? All right, so he says some things that are silly, if not objectionable, but the fact of the matter is blacks have higher income, Hispanics have higher incomes, there are less people on food stamps, uh, many corporations are giving huge bonuses to employees since the tax law. He passed the tax law. He, again, I'm not a big cheerleader. I'm simply pointing out even-handedly what the man has done. Do not judge him on his style. Judge him on his accomplishments, which are considerable whether we Democrats like it or not. And until we Democrats can figure out how to match such effectiveness, we are going to lose again. I don't care whether Oprah runs or not, as was hinted. All right, here's the quote. 
Hey, what happened? Oh, it is important to, uh, this is about narcotics now. This is something I wrote. It is important to address the key or prime mover slippery slope of beliefs that allows users and seekers to begin and continue their inappropriate use of addictive medications. Not that the same isn't also true for cigarettes, alcohol, overweight, uh, dangerously fast and distracted driving risk. The answer is how do we actuate and infuse, discuss, maturity, restraint, deference, legality, patience, the ability to consider implications in terms of a reasonably safe tomorrow plan. That last sentence is the critical step that needs to be addressed to control the opioid epidemic, epidemic and no one is discussing it that I am aware of. If there is an enemy on the north, the south, the east, and the west, which one do you want me to fight? The answer is you don't want me to fight one. They all need to be addressed and dealt with. We're getting a three minutes. Okay. So my point is detoxing people is not going to stop the opioid epidemic. Epidemic. There is a massive amount of recidivism just like with prison. And we ought to be dealing with prison in the same way. Do I need to reread this? Actuate and infuse maturity, restraint, deference, acceptance of legality, patience, the ability to consider implications in terms of a reasonably safe tomorrow plan. Reasonably safe tomorrow plan. That is what we need to put into people. And again, mea culpa. It's not like I'm entirely innocent. And in a certain sense, as I've already said, I'm not really interested if you're doing a little of this or a little of that. We each one need to go back to the concept that might be called responsibility, mature responsibility. All right, uh, so back to Sherry Roth and all of our people who are spending the money that we work very hard and that because they are so careless with their spending patterns, and you may say, no, no, they're being very careful. They are not being very careful, and we need to say so. Maybe Sherry's going to contact me. I hope so. Uh, I'd like to talk to her, but frankly, I'm not sure the economic discussion is, um, I got it, uh, going to work out uh, because it's a little over my head. But the principles are obvious. Do not spend now and in the future more than you are taking in. And if the load and burden is creating a flight of residences, then you need to bring things down to the acceptable level at this time. Not next year, not the following year. And you may say, that doesn't take into account. Don't tell me it doesn't take into account. Start taking it into account is my point. Now, um, I wanted to say finally a, a few things. Um, MRIs can now be done safely on people with old pacemakers. They may have to be adjusted. That used to be thought to be absolutely forbidden. Uh, there was an article that said uh, one minute. Uh, said that uh, eating cheese does not increase the risk of heart disease. That is utter nonsense. It does, but the people who eat cheese do other things to, in a certain sense, compensate and reduce that risk. They could do it without eating the cheese. The human body, I didn't get to that, whether you and I like it or not, is essentially 90 plus percent vegan vegetarian. You don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. But it is the fact if you want your freedom, remember I mentioned chief financial officer, if they want to reduce disease, it's very, very simple what they must be promoting. Well, I think that wraps it up. Good day and God bless you all. I am H. Robert Silverstein, hopefully not too much in your face, for the Preventive Medicine Center uh, and West Hartford Cable Access TV.